hello there. It's Sandy Almock, and I had to make a rainbow this week because it's been quite the week. You may have noticed if you're in America, you couldn't have missed it. If you're around the world, you probably didn't either. We've had quite a horrible time of things lately, but God is always good in the midst of all of that. And what always reminds me of God's goodness is seeing any kind of rainbow whether it's a rainbow in the sky or a rainbow on paper. So I'm making a rainbow. <laughs> I had a little issue with my footage. I tried filming the Bible journaling page that I'll be showing you, and the camera did not turn on. So yeah, it was a heck of a week in America. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm just gonna attribute that to the gremlins of the week. And I decided uh, instead of trying to find another page to do the same project on, that I would do this in my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook, just to talk about how to form a rainbow. And in the page that I did in my Bible, I drew a bunch of shapes using a set of nesting dies. And if you're a crafter and you use nesting dies, then you'll know what those are, so you can use any kind of shape to do this. Just draw them in and then paint them. But the way I approach the painting itself to get a rainbow going across the whole thing is to start by choosing a couple of shapes that don't overlap each other because with watercolor when they start overlapping each other the colors mix and then it turns into craziness so I wanted to keep that kind of straightforward so I went for the Roy G. Biv model of the rainbow red orange yellow green blue indigo violet and I kind of lump indigo violet ish together indigo is basically a dark bluish purplish kind of color but when you put just a few of them throughout the whole rainbow of shapes that you've stretched out then you can sort of start filling in the blanks in between them so i've got all the first ones filled out with the paints that are in my palette you can use whatever palette whatever watercolors you have and then you need to start kind of figuring out what to do in between so down here i needed to go between the red and the orange so I mixed a red orange. I took my orange color and I mixed some red in it. And depending on how much water you put in it, you end up with a darker color or a lighter color. That first one, I, right here, I used the full strength of the color that I mixed. Then I added water to it and look, I get a lighter red orange color. But this helps me to start building something that will look like a rainbow in the whole swoosh of shapes. And that's what I really wanted to talk about today anyway so it didn't matter all that much that you didn't get to see it on the bible page you got to see it here because this is much clearer anyway my bible page has a whole lot of other things going on in it and this is much clearer to see the rainbow forming and that's one of the reasons that i put it in the book so that you could practice things like rainbows and then you could translate that into your bible journaling now when i talked about nesting dies if you don't have nesting dies you can still do something like this you can either do something like squares. So you can cut out pieces of cardstock in different size squares or diamonds. You could turn it at 45 degree angles and put them onto your page, just trace them. Or you can find round objects around your house and do layered circles and do the same thing. If you don't, not many people will have a whole set of hexagons. Hexagons is kind of my shape. I love hexagons. So I have a set of those in my crafty stash. But as I started moving up, I was trying to think, okay, now I've got to get from yellow to green because in the, the rainbow, you get from yellow to green by going with the yellow green. I also then started adding in more orange colors in between. And you can add other shapes to this too if you're working on this page. There's a few spots where I wanted to put something extra in there. So I just added my own hexagons and I did not draw them in. So that was a little bit of a, a fail on a few of them because they didn't work out all that straight. But nonetheless, the idea still works, right? So now I got to get from green to blue. So I mixed green in my palette with some blue. You can also mix this on the paper and not mix it in the palette. But if you're just trying to mix a straight up color, this is a really great exercise to learn to do that. To Pull different colors from your palette and see what happens when you mix them. Sometimes you can mix crazy colors together and make a new discovery. You can find all different kinds of neutral colors you can make 
by mixing things that don't seem like they'd go together. Like a red and a green can make a brown really easily. So practicing with your watercolors and having fun with it is a really great way to learn because I can sit here and tell you things till I'm blue in the face, but it doesn't really help if you're not actually practicing with the paints that you have. So now I'm adding in more blue hexagons throughout this. I have a couple different blues in the palette, so I can do several of them. And you can tell that the lighter one in the background had a lot more water in it. So the other ones have more pigment in them and less water. But I only have one purple in my palette. So what I ended up doing was mixing purple and blue first to get a blue violet. And that is the color that's in between blue and violet would be a blue violet. And there's a dozen different ways to mix a blue violet, but just adding purple and blue together will give me one blue violet. But then when you get off the other end of the rainbow, you end up in the red violets. So I needed to make something more pinkish, that kind of a purple. So I added a pink color to the purple mix and then ended up with a more reddish kind of purple color. And that all together gives me a huge rainbow across the whole page. And there's a, a pure pink out there on the end as well. So that's the basics of how you can do a rainbow with shapes like this. And I did it on my Bible page and I did it by drawing hexagons. You can see they're under my left hand there sticking out. It's a whole set of nesting dies that are different sizes. And anything you have around your house that you have multiple sizes of, you can do shapes like that. You could even like have, if you have little kids, the babies, do their hands and just overlap tracing their hands in your Bible and then paint each one a different color. That would be kind of nice too. And the final step on this, which actually did get captured on film, was putting white outlines around each one of my hexagons because I thought it would make them a little more delicate, a little more intricate on the page itself. And then I could just add some journaling in it. And this kind of a background can be used for all sorts of verses. You don't have to follow any verse that I'm using or anything. And it, it will just be a wonderful background, that sort of thing. Just leave yourself some open space and decide whether you're going to write in black or white so that you know whether you want to make that space light colored or dark colored. So mine has a big open light green space for writing the cinnamon itself, the, the words from scripture. So that's about it for this week. I hope you're having a good one. I hope next week will be a better one than last. And I'll see you again next Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.